Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. So for today's video, I have three perfume recommendations for you. And these three fragrances are perfumes that I would probably recommend in place of Coco Mademoiselle from the house of Chanel. Now, Chanel fragrances in general, I have kind of struggled to find one that's, um, that I've liked enough to actually purchase. And to be honest, when I tried Coco Mademoiselle, for example, I don't remember being that blown away by it at all. It's just not a fragrance that I thought was um, all that great. I found the patchouli in it to be quite strong. I found it to be quite a linear fragrance. I found it to be kind of too overpowering in general. So it smells nice and everything, but I feel like there are other fragrances out there that are just better in general, more interesting and um, definitely worth checking out. So these are the ones we're gonna be looking at today instead of Coco Mademoiselle. And if it's your first time here, then welcome. If you enjoy hearing about all things fragrance and beauty and fashion, then uh, please feel free to subscribe to my channel so you'll never miss a video and you can activate the notification bell as well so that you can be notified every time I post. But anyway, with all that out of the way, let's get started with these perfumes. So the first fragrance I want to tell you guys about today is one that I've compared to Coco Mademoiselle quite a few times before on my channel and that one is Sofia by Sofia Vergara. Now this fragrance right here you guys is incredible, I would definitely suggest giving it a try. It's actually out of the three that we're going to be looking at today, this is the most affordable. So I believe I paid between 15 and 20 pounds or was it just over 20 pounds? It was round about that sort of amount and this is a 100ml bottle. It smells incredible, it smells very sort of polished and put together and it definitely smells like designer quality at the very least. So this fragrance, oh, it's just so beautiful, you guys. So in this fragrance, we have notes of blackberry, plum, currant buds, orchid, rose, violet, woody notes, vanilla and sandalwood. This fragrance to me gives off a very similar vibe to Coco Mademoiselle, despite only sharing a few notes. So I believe the note crossover with these two, it's the rose and the vanilla, and there's also a similar kind of fruitiness and a similar like style of fragrance, I suppose you could say, but actually when you look at the notes, they don't share that many notes. So I was very surprised to see that considering how much this actually reminds me of Coco Mademoiselle. Now to me, this fragrance right here is better in many ways, really. It's just smoother, it's better blended, it smells less sharp, it's not as kind of uh, sharp and scratchy and Overall, I just, I much prefer this one. Also, I will say the lasting power of this fragrance is incredible. It's a very, very strong perfume. So pretty much in every area, it's it's a really fantastic scent. Even the packaging, I think the packaging of this one is really pretty. It's got this kind of faceted glass appearance and it's just really feminine, um, would look really lovely on your table and everything like that. A fantastic celebrity scent, if not the best celebrity scent I've ever come across. Just because, as I say, it doesn't smell cheap in the slightest. It smells like designer quality to me. Um, it gives basically a similar sort of um, mood as Coco Mademoiselle from Chanel, except as I say, for the reasons I've mentioned, I actually prefer this one. And this is the one I would recommend to you over Coco Mademoiselle. Next up today, we have this fragrance here from the house of Givenchy and that's Lintrudy the EDP. I was actually quite surprised to discover how many notes Lintrudy shares with Coco Mademoiselle. So the notes they share is bergamot, jasmine, orange blossom, vetiver, vanilla, and patchouli. So they actually share more notes than Sophia does with Coco Mademoiselle. And that was kind of interesting to me because initially I would have said Sophia was sort of more similar in, in many ways. But actually, Lintrudy shares more notes with the Coco Mademoiselle fragrance. Lintrudy is a bit more focused on the white florals. You also have the tube rose in here, which of course Coco Mademoiselle does not have. And um, Coco Mademoiselle has the rose, which Lintrudy does not have. But aside from that, you know, the mood of these two fragrances, Lintrudy and uh, Coco Mademoiselle, they do definitely share a similar kind of style. 
particularly that sharp sort of nature that you get from the patchouli, the the vetiver as well. They both share that same kind of like punchiness about them. And actually, I would say the Lintrudy has a bit more edge to it overall. So your Lintrudy has a bit more attitude about it. It's got more of an intoxicating trail, I would say. I have smelt this on other people and I've been amazed at the trail that it leaves behind. It's just a very strong fragrance. And in some ways, it's sometimes a bit strong for me. But, you know, when I'm talking about fragrances to recommend to you, because it's so strong and it leaves such an intoxicating trail, I do think that's actually a good thing because that's what lots of people want from their fragrance. And um, this is the fragrance that I decided to purchase and I haven't purchased Coco Mademoiselle. So this is the one I would recommend to you guys. Let me know if you've tried this. Um, it definitely has that same sort of... Uh, fruity patchouli sharpness about it that Coco Mademoiselle has but as I say I prefer this one here because it's more unique it's got more of an attitude about it and also the tuberose sort of nuance they have in here is very nice as well so that one is Lintrudy the EDP from Givenchy and last up today but by no means least we have the beautiful Tignu de Soiree from the house of Goutal and this is the third fragrance I would recommend to you over Coco Mademoiselle I do find this fragrance has a very similar mood to Coco Mademoiselle, but again, I would say this one is more unique and it's more interesting to me. It's also smoother and better blended. So the notes that um, Tenue de Soiree shares with Coco Mademoiselle is bergamot, jasmine, rose, musk, and patchouli. So they do share quite a few of the same notes. And again, this fragrance, in my opinion, has that kind of sharpness to it that Coco Mademoiselle has and also your uh, Lintrudy has. It's definitely got a kind of sharpness to it, but part of that is coming from the tart fruitiness that you have going on in here. So the fruitiness in this fragrance is more of a kind of sour, tart, authentic fruitiness, but it is balanced out with the kind of sweetness from the caramel notes that they have in here as well. And they have a tiny whisper of leather, which to be honest, I don't really pick up on much myself. Um, and this one has the other notes that I've mentioned. So on the whole, this is a very gorgeous, unique, sophisticated, well-balanced fragrance that kind of, I would say the mood of it and the style of it is reminiscent of Coco Mademoiselle, but just in my opinion, this one is much better. Out of all of these, this one is potentially my favorite. Um, I find this one the easiest to wear. I find it really, really versatile. It's just such an elegant, sophisticated, feminine fragrance. And it's it's got that kind of sharpness to it, but it's, mm, it's still much smoother than Coco Mademoiselle, if that makes sense. You've definitely got that fruity patchouli signature in here, but overall, it's just a much more interesting fragrance, more unique, very sophisticated, and I would recommend this one over Coco Mademoiselle. So there we have it you guys, those are three perfumes I would recommend for you to try instead of Chanel's Coco Mademoiselle. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, let me know if you have tried any of these and which one you prefer. Also let me know how you've got on with Chanel's perfumes in general because like I say, I've yet to find one that I like enough to actually go out and purchase which is pretty surprising considering how much I adore fragrances and how um, well known and iconic the Chanel house is. You know, I would have thought that by now I would have added one into my collection. But like I say, I've found other perfumes that I just prefer to the Chanel one and I haven't felt the need to add a Chanel one into my collection yet. So anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to hearing from you guys in the comments. Don't forget to leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought and click subscribe for new videos every week and I can't wait to see you again very soon. Bye!